All right, guys. Um, this is the key to the Unit 3 study guide. Um, test is Wednesday, December 14th. Just a reminder, uh, no notes are allowed. Um, please bring a pen, pencil, and a calculator. If not, a calculator will be provided. Um, all right. Um, just basic stuff. This is your number one priority doing this practice test. That's the required practice test. You need to turn this in on the day of the test. Do not forget that to turn this on on Wednesday. Um, and then you're uh, if you're doing this, you're on step two. You're checking your answer guide. If you have not yet done your deltas, delta 3.1, 3.7, work on those. And then exercise two exercise tests, 3.1, 3.2. Um, I will have office hours Tuesday as well as Wednesday morning before the test. All right, we're starting with notes. So if you want to get straight to the answers and you're good on your notes, you can skip ahead, obviously. Um, first up, we've got interval properties. And I'm actually getting all these notes from the toolkits that we've gone through earlier. So you're welcome uh, to follow along from there. Uh, first, interval properties, they are, there are one, two, there are six of them. We have the zero interval which uh, says that if you have the integral from a to a of some function dx, this will equal zero. So a and a, this is the same upper and lower bound. You can kind of picture this as that kind of like as one, one line that has no, uh, no area to it. So the integral of two of the same bound is zero. Okay. Next one we have addition. Um, addition or subtraction. And this says that if you have an integral from a to b of some function f of x dx, and you add another integral, say from b to c, f of x dx, then you will have an, an integral a to c, f of x dx. So we can write two separate integrals as one whole integral. And we can do this because visually what's kind of happening is you have Let's say if some fun this is a function, let's say that this is a, this is b, and this is c. Okay, so if you think about this, you have a to b, the area of this, right, and you have the area of b to c. Well, together it's one big integral from a to c. So because they're connected, the key thing here is that they are connected with this b, this b, and this b here, because they're connected there. Uh, this can be written as one big integral. Okay. Next one is negation. This one comes up a lot. Um, definitely be prepared to see this. Um, negation. So what negation says is that if you have an, the integral b to a um, f of x dx um, notice here that I'm, you're used to seeing A to B, A to B, A to B, low to high. Now this is high to low, um, but it doesn't matter. Like it, it could be low to high, it could be high to low. It doesn't matter. All we're saying is that we can actually switch these two. I can move these, this one here and this one here, as long as I make it negative. So this equals a negative integral of A to B. B f of x dx. So uh, usually the way that you want integrals written to, as you evaluate them is from low to high. So if you can convert them, um, you want to do so. Let's try and simplify things. Um, speaking of simplifying, we have the, so the constant rule or multiplication by a constant. I'm going to run out of space here. Multiply by constant. 
and this is where you have an integral a to b then you have some k constant here so it's gonna be whatever you want some number f of x dx we can just go ahead and take that out this is equal to k integral a to b f of x dx so constants can be taken out if you can take a common factor out of your function here you can move that out front to make things easier um, I don't have space, but I'm going to go ahead and just switch to the toolkit and go over the last two. So some difference is that when you have the integral of two separate functions added together, so some f of x plus some g of x, we can actually separate those into two separate integrals. So that's some difference. Um, so two, two different functions can we be rewritten as two different integrals. And then the last one is translation, which I will talk about more in the practice test. But translation says, um, if, and this is what I kind of showed down here, if you move uh, the bounds, so remember this, what this says here is that we're moving the bounds some c to the right. Well, if we move them some c to the right here, as you can see, but we also move the function c to the right, that's what this is saying, moving the function c to the right, then those two are the same thing. And you'll see that come up quite a bit too. Okay, so these can change as long as the function is moving by the same amount. And I'll go over this during the practice test. So um, antiderivative is next. Antiderivative. So the antiderivative is the um, expression whose derivative gets us back to the original function. Um, so it's represented by this, this is this equals antiderivative. That's good to know. Capital F of X antiderivative and the derivative of the antiderivative will equal my original function F of X. Okay. Um, so example, uh, if f of x equals 2x plus 3, the antiderivative would be uh, x squared plus 3x plus c. Uh, because the derivative of this would get me this, right? So this just follows. And just really important here is this plus c. Do not forget to add c when taking the antiderivative, okay? Okay. Um, moving on, fundamental theorem of calculus. So this is, this is the name of the unit. It's the most important thing to know for the unit. Um, let me get my sheet here. So there's two parts, right? We have part one. And what part one says, um, I won't give you the full definition. The full definition is here. I mean, I'll, I'll show you that. It says, if a function is continuous on A to B and the antiderivative, F, uh, capital F of X, is equal to the area function A to X of F of T dt, then the derivative of that area function of the um, and derivative is equal to the uh, the function of the integral. Um, I think this is best explained by the expression. I think the language of it is kind of, can be kind of confusing. What we're saying is the derivative of the area function equals the original function. So these two are, are really closely related to each other because this, <clears throat> this f of x here, this capital F of x, the antiderivative, that represents um, this. These two things are equivalent. See, the antiderivative 
is the area function. Um, so when you take the derivative of the area function, you're just left with the original. Okay. So the antiderivative is the area function. When we take the derivative of that, we just left with the original. And we'll go through, through some examples of that in the practice test. Part two, this is the other key one, says when you take the definite integral between two bounds, um, this will equal the antiderivative at the upper bound minus the antiderivative at the lower bound. So both of these two parts of the fundamental theory of calculus are essential to know, especially this bottom one. This bottom one appears all the time, especially the AP test. So first one says the derivative, essentially the first one says the derivative of the area function is the original function because the area function is the antiderivative. And the second one says that the integral between two bounds of a certain function is equal to the antiderivative at B minus the antiderivative at A. And this is what we've been practicing a lot of. Um, applications of integrals. Uh, so this is referring to the uh, velocity displacement acceleration. Uh, this is from the latest toolkit we did, integration applications. Um, so I, this, I'll essentially copy that down. What we're saying is if you're given velocity, I can tell you now that acceleration is not going to appear. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time on acceleration, but I do want to spend a bit of time on velocity versus displacement. So if you're given some velocity and you want to figure out a position or how far it's moved, you want to integrate it, integrate velocity to find the displacement. So I think some other kind of helpful helpful tools is this is kind of another formula you can use where um, let's say we have P, P1 is like initial position plus displacement equals PF. We can think of or P2. It's like initial position. This is initial position. This is displacement. So this is going to be some integral from A to B of V of T dt is going to equal final position. And again, I'll give you some more detail on that when we get to it. And the last one is the area between curves. So with area between curves, this is what's key is that you're always doing the big minus the small. So whenever f of x is greater than g of x, area between f of x and g of x equals the integral a to b f of x minus g of x. Um, there's a few little caveats to this. So number one is that it's always when uh, f of x is greater than g of x. It has to be true. So if, if at some point they overlap each other, you got to make separate integrals. Um, and if you've got multiple functions, you're going to have to have multiple integrals as well. So I'll spend some time talking about that in the practice test. But these are this is what you need to know. These are all the notes that you need to know. If you know these, you will be successful in the test. And the way, the way to practice them is over here on the right. Okay, so if you're like not unsure about a certain place, please go to this resource. Okay, we are gonna move on to the practice test. 
Okay. And uh, I'm going to take my time explaining the practice test. Um, feel free to like, you can skip forward or you can uh, turn my speed up if I'm going too slow, but I'm just going to take my time for those of you who maybe missed class or not sure what's going on. So earlier this unit, you should have noticed a close relationship between derivatives and integrals, just like with velocity and distance. In particular, you have seen that if you know the velocity at time t, then you can compute the distance traveled from t equals zero to t equals x by using uh, s of x equals integral zero to x v of t dt. If v of t, so remember this is velocity here, v velocity. If the velocity is 2t plus 5 in miles per hour, how far has a car traveled after 2 hours, after 5 hours, after x hours? So this is what I just went over at the end of the notes. This is applications of integrals, where if you're given velocity and I want to find displacement, uh, I need to integrate. So here, uh, I'm not given any initial uh, distance, but that's fine. I don't need an, addition, an, an initial point, initial uh, value, because I'm only asking how far is the car traveled. So I want to be, I'm just finding displacement. I'm not finding final position, just how far is the class, how far has the car traveled? This is uh, displacement. Specifically, I think in, a, in an AP test, they would be more specific with the wording of this because this could be interpreted in different ways. But as it stands, because of the nature of the velocity, this is this is simply displacement. So after two hours, so you want to take the, remember that we're taking the integral from zero because that's my beginning point. Um, I, I'm starting at zero hours. I haven't traveled at all to two hours. And then I'm, I'm really just following this uh, formula here. 2t uh, plus 5 dt. I know that's a bit messy with the pluses and the t's. We're going to move away from that in a second. I need to really differentiate between the two. Um, so this is fundamental theorem of calculus. So again, back to if we think about the notes, this is fundamental theorem of calculus. I'm taking a definite integral. So I'm doing this. I'm finding the antiderivative of b minus antiderivative of a. So step one. We find the antiderivative, so let's differentiate here. This is gonna, or uh, let's integrate, sorry. This is uh, x squared plus five x plus c from zero to two, okay. 2t, that's t to the power of 1, so 1 plus 2 is 2, divided by 2 is, that cancels, so that's how I just get x squared. Uh, 5, any uh, constant when you integrate it, or you anti, find the antiderivative, it just becomes 5x, or that constant times the variable, and then the plus c always at the end. And now we're going to do f of 2 minus f of 0 which is going to be, we're going to plug in 2 into this, that's 4 plus uh, 10 is 14. 14 plus C is F of 2, and then plug in 0. You're going to get 0, you're just going to get the minus C, which will cancel, so you'll just have a 14. So we can say it travels 14 miles. Okay. Um, for 5 hours, this is very easy. I don't have to write a whole other integral. I can just do f of 5 minus f of 0. Right, I'm just changing that bound to a 5 rather than a, a 2. So now I plug in a 5, so that's 25 plus 25 plus c, which is just 50 plus c minus c equals uh, 50. And guys, I want you not to get lazy. I don't want to see you dropping the C's. I need the C's in there. I don't want you getting lazy. Okay. Include the C. And then the last one, I'm just going to change that to an X. So it's going to be F of 
x minus f of 0. So for f of x, that's just this entire expression. So we're going to get um, x squared plus 5x plus c minus c just equals x squared plus 5x. Okay. How far did the car travel between 2 and 4 hours? So if I want not between zero, 0 anymore, now my starting point is what? My starting point is 2. My end point is 4. Okay, so now I'm going to take the integral from 2 to 4. Uh, 2 t plus 5 d t. Okay, so same steps. Let's find the antiderivative. x squared plus 5x plus c. Um, and then we'll plug in the values. So my bounds are 2 to 4. So I want f of 4 minus f of 2. That's 16 plus uh, 20 is 36 plus c minus. Uh, we know that's already, we know that's 14 plus c from before, minus 14 plus c. Um, and this will, the c's will cancel. Right, so really what this says is. 36 minus 14 plus C minus C. I'm just distributing that negative. So the C's cancel, and that leaves me just with uh, 22 miles. Okay. Um, just to clarify here, taking the antiderivative, I wrote X's here um, for kind of simplicity, but reality, you would leave them as a T. Okay, here as well. Um, and then when you when you find f of x, though, that's when the x goes in. Okay, that's me being I think on the test. I'm not going to take off points if you if you change the variables, but for for the AP test, I'm uh, making that clear. Okay. See what is the relationship among position, velocity, and the fundamental theorem of calculus. So again, this is straight from your notes. Um, Position is uh, the antiderivative of velocity. Velocity is derivative of position. So position displacement are often used as interchangeable. Uh, terms. Um, and then FTC um, says that the first part says derivatives and integrals are inverse. Operations. Okay, that's number one. <clears throat> All right. Number two. So we are given an integral, one integral. That's that's given to be true. Um, we have let me zoom in on this. We have if the integral from two to four of f x dx equals ten, evaluate the following. So the first one. Um, it's like spot the difference. Well, now it's four to two, but it's also negative on the inside. So using our integral rule that I went over in the notes, integral rule, this is negation. So if you have B to A, we can flip it and make it A to B. So I can flip it, but I got to make it negative. So I'm going to have a negative integral two to four 
of negative f of x. Um, now using the constant rule here, this negative right here, I can bring this out to the front because that's a constant. Really, right? you can imagine this is like a negative one kind of, this is how I picture it. That's a negative one out front. So I'm gonna bring that negative one out front here. So what you're gonna get is, um, I'm just gonna name this. It's kind of a negative one, negative one integral two to four of f of x. That's really what this is, what we're saying. Every kind of every negative sign really just means multiplying by negative one. So I'm just I'm uh, writing that out like that. So what does this equal? Well, this is these just cancel. That's just one. So we just really have the integral of two to four f of x. Don't forget the dx, um, which just equals ten, which is what we which, which is what we started with. So yes, this is flipped. But because we have a negative in here, we have a double negative situation, which means that it just equals 10. Okay, the next one. Um, we have integral 10 to 12 of fx minus 8 plus 4. You might be asking, well, how can I possibly find this if it's not saying 10 to 12? Like this is 2 to 4, this is 10 to 12. I can't possibly do that. But this is the translation rule. Uh, which says that if you, let me find that page. Yeah, here it is. If we add some number to our bounds, but subtract it from our function, it's the same thing. So notice here from 2 to 10, that's plus 8. No, on this one, rather. It's plus 8. So this is really the same thing as integral 2 plus 8 and to 4 plus 8. That's really what this is, the same thing. So this is a, these are equivalent. It seems like we can't solve it, but we can. Uh, we also want to use the, the sum different the sum difference uh, rule to separate this into two integrals. So let's do that. So you want to you want to like simplify things whenever possible, right? So we have integral 10 to 12 f of x minus 8 dx plus integral 10 to 12 4 dx. Well, we know because this, because of that plus 8 rule and with the minus 8 in here, that's going to be 10 because it's the same thing. We move the bounds 10 to the right, but we also uh, move the function 8, uh, sorry, 8 to the right. 8 to the right to the bounds and 8 to the right to the function for the function. Okay. Um, so how about this? How about the 4? How do we find that? Well, 4, this is why it's really helpful to visualize what's going on in a interval. Interval is area. Think area in your head. So really, if you think about 4, 4 is that horizontal line. I want the area under that 4 from 10 to 12. Well, what's the area of that? Well, it's just 2, right? So our answer is 10 plus 2, which is 2. Sorry, 2 times 4. This is 8. 10 plus 8 is 18. Okay, the area is what I'm looking for. The height of this is 4, the width of it is 2, so the total of this is 8. So the integral of 4 from 10 to 12 is just 8. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Last one. Integral 10 to 12, f of x plus 8 dx. Okay, for this one, we did shift 8 to the right. So that, with that, this is the same thing as this. We shifted 8 to the right. However, notice that inside here, we're not, we're not subtracting it, we're adding 8. And I know this is counterintuitive, but when you add 8 inside the function, this is actually shifting it. 
eight left. Okay. Whereas this is shifting it eight right. So these are not the same thing. These two are not the same thing. So this is actually unknown, which I know you might be thinking is like a trick question, uh, but that's unknown because these are these do not align. You might think, oh, that's 10. It's not 10 because this shifted it eight to the left. That shifted the bounds eight to the right. We have no idea what's going on in the function at that point. This is unknown. On the test, if unknown is an option, I will, I will let you know that. Um, okay. Next, rewrite the following integral expressions as one integral. Okay, first one. We have integral negative three to five plus integral negative five to three, uh, but they are different functions. So in order to write this as, a, as, as the same integral, I need the, I need these bounds to be the same. So let's fix the bounds. Um, I'm going to, I like it low to high, so I'm going to make, change the f of x. Uh, so it's negative five to three. So this is going to become, uh, negative integral, negative five, negative three, f of x dx. And I can move that negative inside here. That's also going on. So this negative is coming inside. So now, to write it as one integral, it can be integral just negative 5 to negative 3. G of x. Right, G of x did not change at all. But I did have to put a negative in front of f of x f of x dx. Alternatively, you could have done negative 3 to negative 5. So this is like an or. Or you could have said integral negative 3, negative 5. Um, and that would be f of x minus g of x dx. Okay. Next one. We have... 3 integral 1 to x f of x dx plus 5 integral 1 to x g of x dx. So similar how do I move that negative to the inside there, I'm going to do the same thing here. Now that the intervals are the same, so I don't need to worry about that. But the 3 and the 5, because of that constant rule, I can actually move them back inside. And now I can combine them. So it's one big interval, 1 to 6. You know those bounds are going to stay the same. But I'm going to have 3. 3 f of x and then 5 uh, g of x dx. Okay. Next one, we have 6 to 11 f of x plus 11 to 6 f of x. You guys should be getting used to this by now. You know what I'm going to say. Uh, flip the bounds. So we're going to flip these two. Right. So it's going to go from uh, 6 to 11, right? So you're going to have integral 6 to 11 f of x dx minus integral 6 to 11 f of x dx. Because I had to, in order to flip them, I had to make a negative, right? So what happens, these are the same thing, right? So this just equals a big fat zero. Okay, uh, last one, uh, 7 to 10 minus 7 to 9. Um, helpful to visualize these when you have these bounds. So imagine, that, okay, well, I've got 7 to 10, and I'm subtracting in a different color 7 to 9. So I'm going to kind of lightly shade this. So 7 to 10 is my original. And 7 to 9 is what I'm subtracting. So if you have this big 7 to 10, and you subtract the 7, to not put the 9 in there. 
10 to 9, what's left over? Well, 9 to 10. So this is just in a row. 9 to 10, f of t, d, t. Okay. All right. Moving on. Uh, number four. Uh, this is fundamental theorem of calculus. So, you should be thinking in your head, when you see a definite integral, by that I mean the bounds are defined, this is not an empty integral, uh, you want to follow the, the, the pattern, which is, first, we're going to find that derivative, the antiderivative, from a to b, and then we're going to do the subtraction. And if you're following this rule, you're going to be receiving the points, most the majority of the points. If you make a little arithmetic area, that's maybe a point off, but you're getting the majority of the points, 80% of the points for just following these the steps. Okay, so step one, let's find the antiderivative of this. So using that uh, the inverse power rule, 2 plus 1 is 3, 3 divide, divide the whole thing by 3, you're just going to get uh, z to the third. Uh, and put a little cross in there to signify it's a z minus. Uh, this is going to be z squared over two because I'm again that I've got a little one here, right? So plus one is two divided by two, and then plus a z, and then plus a c. Don't forget the plus c even when it's a definite integral. Don't get lazy from negative one to one. Okay, then. Write it out. We're going to do f of uh, 1 minus f of negative 1. So let's plug in the 1. You get 1 to the third is 1 minus uh, 1 squared. It says minus 1 half plus 1 uh, plus c minus uh, negative one to the third is negative one minus negative one squared is one so it's still minus one half uh, minus one plus c um, and then we'll just combine so this is two this is uh, uh, one and a half or 1.5 this is equivalent to 1.5 plus c minus uh, that's negative 2.5 plus c so the c's will cancel Oop, over here the c's will cancel and then a double negative will get me uh four so the answer is four okay so antiderivative mark the bounds Subtract, plug it in, evaluate, cancel the seeds at the end. Okay. Next one. <clears throat> Integral. Uh, 6 to 11 root 2 dx. This is very similar to what we did actually on the previous page. We got a constant right here. So, I mean, this one is easier to do because you can sort of visualize it. You know, you can draw the, the graph and think, oh, you really just have a a root two, right, from six to 11. So this is a rectangle that's going from five by root two. So the answer is five root two, I can tell you that by by the visual, right? But we can also do this um, through the same method. So if you didn't figure that out, if you didn't notice that, you can still figure it out through this method. Same method, find the antiderivative. Antiderivative root two is just root two x plus c from 6 to 11. Um, and then we're going to do f of 11 minus f of c, antiderivative at c, sorry, antiderivative at 6, rather. Um, so we're going to have root 2 times 11 plus c minus root 2 times 6. 
plus C um, so the C's will cancel and you think two uh, root 211 minus root 26 is root 2 uh, 5 which is the same answer I got over here okay and you can do that in the calculator if you want to that's fine all right um, last one here does integral a to b f of x dx equal integral from b a minus c to b minus c f of x minus c dx explain clearly why it is or not a true statement so this is a very important question um i'm gonna do some graph paper so what this is saying let's let's look at this what is it saying so we're moving the bounds what direction we're minus minus c so they're moving to the what they're moving to the left so bounds let's write what the facts are here bounds move left c places right and then what about the insides here well, so this is what I'm going to review on the graph paper, but the minus C here function moves C places right. Okay. That is what that's saying. So since the bounds move left C places, but the function moves C places right, this is not true. Um, so I'm going to go over the, this in detail right now. Feel free if you like are good with the movement of functions, like transfer translation of functions, then you can skip this. But I just, uh, as a hint to you, you would want to be familiar with these for the test. So imagine you have uh, f of x equals x squared. Let's just let's just say our function is x squared. Okay. So think about x squared. Right, looks like this. If I do f of x minus 1, which would be x minus 1 squared, what happens? Well, it shifts the whole function one place to the right. So this means that negative inside the functions means shifts right, okay? And you can uh, you can do the math on this. You can you can test it to see if I'm right. But essentially, what you're doing is zero becomes negative one. One becomes zero. Right? When I plug in a one, really, I'm doing zero. So that's why zero is now at one, if that makes sense. That's how I interpret it. And then if you were to do f of x plus one, which is x plus one squared, it's gonna have the opposite effect. It's gonna move it to the left. It's gonna move it like this. Okay. So this means <clears throat> with the plus inside the function means shifts left. I want to cover two more. So there's this is a uh, these are horizontal. These are horizontal because it's it's inside the function, um, but we also have vertical. So with vertical, th this would be f of x minus one. 
um, which would be x squared minus 1. This is going to shift the whole thing down. This means down 1. Okay. I mean, you can kind of picture this like a, um, like the B in the MX plus B. It's like your constant is decreasing. You're, you're decreasing everything by one. So just notice the difference between these two. This is inside the square. This is outside of the square. So notice the difference. Outside of the function, inside the function. If it's inside the function, it's going to be horizontal. If it's outside of the function, it's vertical. So really keep that in mind. Um, and likewise, if you have f of x plus 1, that's x squared plus 1. That's going to move it up 1. So that would make it look like this, right? So back to the problem. Um, uh, if I give you a question like this, you want to look at which way the bounds are moving, right? Okay, the bounds are moving t to the left. And then what's happening to the function? And really know this, right? Know this. We have right inside if it's minus, left inside if it's plus, down outside minus, up outside plus. So know these transformations, translations. Um, because you may see a question like this, okay? Um, evaluate each of the function, each of the following. So this looks complicated. This looks very complicated, but in reality, it's at it's very easy um, because what we're doing is derivative of an integral, and these are inverses of each other. So for this one, it simply equals based on FTC Part One Fundamental Theorem of Calculus Part One. This is just sine x over x squared plus 3x minus 2. Guys, these are inverses of each other. They undo each other. The, the, anti -der the derivative of the antiderivative is the original. So this is FTC part 1. That's what it says. Okay. Um, the next one is a little different. And uh, this is exercise set 3.2 if you want more practice with this. And I'll, I'll, there will be a video out for that um, that you can watch. For this one, you do have to do um, a definite integral, like a definite, like the fundamental theorem of calculus part two. So think of it, this is how I interpret this. The derivative of this function this is basically this. Let's picture this as the derivative, right? That's the derivative. So we're doing an integral from two to x of the derivative. That's really what's going on. Okay. So we're going to do fundamental theorem of calculus, this one right here. So um, we're going to do integral. Sorry, we need to find the antiderivative of. The derivative. What's the antiderivative of the derivative? It's just the function f of x from 2 to x. Okay. This is the derivative. We want the antiderivative of the derivative. So really, that's just this right here. That's just square root 2x squared plus 3 from 2 to x. We don't have to do anything else. That's it. Okay, um, so using the rule, we're going to do f of x minus f of 2. So f of x, we know that's just root 2x squared plus 3 minus f of 2. I still got 2 in here, so you have 2 squared is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. 8 plus 3 is root 11. So minus root 11. And uh, that's it. That's the answer. Okay, so um, the idea here is, okay, if we didn't have this derivative here, right, let's just pretend for a second this wasn't here, you would have to integrate this. You'd have to find the antiderivative of this, and then you would do the bounds, and then you would do the subtraction. 
The difference is, because this is already the derivative, we, this is saying take the derivative of this, right? That's what this is saying. This is the derivative. If we take the antiderivative, we're just taking away the ddx. We're taking away the derivative. Now, now, now it's the antiderivative. This is the antiderivative. This is the derivative. <laughs> antiderivative, derivative, all right? So when, we, when we're doing fundamental theorem calculus part two, and we're asked to find the antiderivative in this step, I can just take the original because what's inside, what the whole thing is the derivative. So the original is just, is the antiderivative. So that's how this, this is, these two questions are dealing with the fact that these are opposites. They deal with them in different ways. And when I explained this in class, I made the mistake of sort of, if, of making this blanket statement that it's always the opposite of each other. And they always undo each other and they do undo each other, but sometimes you ha you still have to apply the fundamental theorem of calculus part two, like in this case, to find the answer. Okay, we're nearly done. Um, part six, write an integral representing the shaded area shown in the graph from x equals zero to x equals four. Okay, so this is conceptual. This is not, there's not much not a lot of math going on here. Um, we have g of x. It's important to know which one's on top and which one's on bottom. g of x. Okay. Remember when you do when you're doing the the, the area between uh, two functions, the function uh, one, if you imagine, always has to be bigger than the other one. So you're always subtracting the smaller function. So right here, okay, this is g of x here, and this is f of x here. So that means I want to be doing g of x minus, minus f of x. So I'm going to have integral from 0 to 2. These are my bounds, right? My first one of g of x minus f of x uh, dx. That's the first one. And then I'm going to add plus the integral from 2 to 4 of, in this case now, it's the other way around f of x minus g of x dx. Okay, and that's the answer. So there's no, there's nothing more you need to do. That's it. Okay, last one. Find the area um, bounded by the graphs of y equals root x from uh, x equals zero y equals negative one and x equals four. Okay, so let's think about this. So y equals negative one is down here. Okay, it says y equals negative one. x equals four is roughly here. Um, x equals zero is right here. So this is kind of my, these are my axes here. Um, and root x looks something like this. Okay. So I'm looking for this area. So this right here, this is root x. This is that's negative one. And this is the area I'm looking for. Okay. So let's set it up, set this up. So we want integral from zero to four, right? Because this is this is four right here, this is zero right here, of root x minus um negative one dx. Okay, let's simplify this. So this is just so I hope you got to this point. 
um, big minus this again, this is think about it like this. This is the big minus small, I guess that's how I would consider it. It's like the bigger function, the higher function minus the lower function. Um, let's simplify this zero to four root X plus one dx now this is fundamental theorem of calculus you see this you think oh fundamental theorem of calculus i better do that so this is a little bit of a more challenging one because this is you might be thinking oh how i don't know i don't know what the antiderivative of root x is you do you may have forgotten but this is one half not um not just root x now you can do it right so Antiderivative is going to be x to the 3 halves divided by 3 halves. When you divide by a 3 halves, it becomes 2 thirds. Okay? You multiply by the reciprocal. Plus x plus c from 0 to 4. Um, now you just, we're doing fundamental theorem of calculus. I'm doing f of four minus f of zero. The f of zero will be easy because that'll just be zero, but the f of four we gotta do um, on the calculator. So we have four, four to the three halves, time which is eight times two divided by three, five and a third plus the four, it's nine and a third. So we have nine a third plus C minus when I plug in zero, I just get zero and then a C at the end. Um, so we just equals nine and a third. So the area of that region is nine and a third. Um, just to be clear with you guys, it is unlikely that I will be giving you a radical like this. More realistic, I'm gonna give you some polynomial. Okay, so be prepared for that. Um, again, radicals, specifically for my AP test takers, you got to be used to this. Convert, power rule, um, and then you're doing fundamental number calculus. Um, let me add the units to this. Um, <clears throat> so that's the test. That's the practice test. Um, review this do the delta, and I will see you on Wednesday.